Number 49. By what fraction will the frequencies produced by a wind instrument change when air temperature goes from 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius? That is, find the ratio of the frequencies at those temperatures. All right. So we have two formulas, right, that deal with frequencies of these, of these instruments and whatnot, right? Tubes open at one end or both ends. They might be saying, well, in order to do this, don't we need to know the type of uh, tube we're dealing with? A tube open at one end or tube closed at one end? Excuse me, well, tube open at one end and the tube closed at one end would be the exact same thing. So a tube open at one end or a tube open at both ends, uh, wouldn't it matter, right? Well, actually it doesn't, okay? Let me show you why. So find the ratio of the frequencies, they say. So they're basically, they basically want us to find the frequency, let's say, under the hotter temperature, okay, divided by the frequency under the colder temperature, all right? Now the frequency under the hotter temperature, right, we have to make one assumption, we can either assume that this thing is going to be a tube open at one end. And if that's the case, we would use the formula that's N times the speed of sound divided by 4L. All right, if it's open at both ends, then it's the other one that's divided by 2L. Now, it doesn't matter which one we choose, because watch. I'll choose the one that's open at one end. It doesn't matter, though, watch. So it's going to be the nth harmonic multiplied then by the speed of sound. So I'll write velocity of sound under the hot conditions divided by then four times the length of the tube and that's all then divided by the nth harmonic multiplied by the velocity of the sound under the cold temperature divided by four times the length of the tube mathematically speaking here these are all going to cancel right the ends cancel the length of the tube hasn't changed so all we realize here is that the frequency under the hot conditions divided by frequency under the cold conditions will be exactly equal to the proportion of the velocity of the sound when it's hot divided by the velocity of sound when it's cold. That's it. Now it doesn't matter if you chose a tube open at both ends also because this would have been these both would have been 2L and they would have canceled. So it actually doesn't matter, right? Now you might say, well, now I have to relate temperature to velocity. How do I do that? Well, we have that formula, right? That is 331 times the square root of the Kelvin temperature divided by 273. So we literally just plug that in now. So this is going to be 331 multiplied by the square root of the hot Kelvin temperature divided by 273, divided then by 331, divided by the square root of the cold Kelvin temperature. Oh, I missed, ooh, I put a little C down there, sorry guys. Over here, right, that should be the hot, it has to correlate, right? This hot temperature correlates with the hot frequency. So this is the cold divided by then 273. If you do some simplifications here, which you can do, which would be nice. So those cancel, right? You can put both of these now under the one radical, <clears throat> and then what will happen is the 273s will also cancel, and you're left with a nice little simple formula here now that the uh, relationship here is just gonna be the square root of the hot divided by the cold, all right? And we need these though in terms of uh, Kelvin. Do not... We need these in terms of Kelvin, okay? Because the divisions will not be equal to one another. 30 divided by 10 is going to be different than the Kelvin temperature of 30, which is, let's do that out, ready? So that's going to be 273 plus 30, right? So that's gonna be 303, divided then by the cold, which would be 273 plus 10, right? Which is 283. So notice this is 303, right, over 283. This is different than 30 over 10. So you can't, you cannot just look at this and say, oh, this is Celsius on the top, this is Celsius on the bottom, the units would cancel, so therefore it would be ratio. Well, yeah, but it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, so just be careful there. So we got the square root of 303 over 283. And what do we get? 1.03, right? So by what fraction will the frequencies produced change? Well, it's going to the hotter frequency will be greater by a factor of 1.03, or AKA it'll be about 3% higher, all right? And that's that. Did I take the square root? Yes, I did. Good, okay. And that's it, guys, all right? So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.